All right, we are starting chapter four, which is all about triangles. And in this first section, uh, we are going to specifically talk about vocabulary and how to classify triangles. So by the end of the video, you should be able to classify triangles by their angle measures as well as their side lengths and use triangle classification to find angle measures and side lengths. So those are our two objectives in this video. Now, if I give you a triangle, recall triangle uh, is a polygon. That means it's a closed shape with only three sides. And we use this symbol uh, to shortcut as a shortcut and instead of writing triangle every time. So if I have this picture for you and I label the points A, B, and C, these A, B, and C, these are called vertices, oops, vertices of the triangle. So um, those are basically the points of the triangle. And as, uh, something else you should know is that the side lengths are line segments. So the side lengths of this triangle would be line segment AB, line segment BC, and line segment AC. So now you have the terminology, you know how to write side lengths, and you know that the points are called vertices. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to break it up into three things. First, we're going to talk about how to classify by angles, then classify by sides, then we're going to um, actually solve and use algebra to find side lengths. So the first thing, classifying triangles based on their angles. Remember chapter one, I think maybe we talked about acute, right, and obtuse triangles, and maybe we even did some angle aerobics. Acute is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. So it's an acute, it's acute little tiny angle. So an example would be like this. A right angle is something that is exactly 90 degrees, and we use that uh, box to show that it is right angle. And obtuse is somewhere between uh, greater than 90 and less than 180 degrees. And algebra two, oops, algebra two, you guys start talking about uh, angles bigger than 180 degrees. Not not so much. Uh, with triangles. So an example of an obtuse angle would look bigger than right, bigger than 90 degrees. Okay, so in terms of triangles, an acute triangle is called acute because it, all three angles are less than 90 degrees. So if I could draw you an example, it's hard for me to draw an example. Let's see. Duh, duh. This one has to be smaller than 90 degrees. Then this one has to be smaller than 90 degrees. Okay, I think that's an acute angle, or acute triangle, sorry, because, let's see, it's close. It's going to be close. This one looks acute to me. This one looks acute to me. This one's close. Uh, maybe if I went like this. I don't know. Try to draw an acute triangle. It's, it's hard to do. I think that's the hardest out of all four that we're going to talk about. Um, so all three angles should be less than 90 degrees. A right triangle, that's easy. One has to be a right right angle. So there is an example of a right triangle. So this one's acute. This one is a right triangle. It's impossible to have more than right one right angle in a right in a triangle. And an obtuse triangle only has one obtuse angle. So um, so an example would be connecting these two. And there is an obtuse triangle. There is one more classification, and that's equi equiangular angular. So there are four different ways to classify triangles. Acute, right, obtuse, and then equiangular. And so you should be okay with, uh, pretty familiar with acute, right, and obtuse. Equiangular is something we've never talked about before. Equa kind of sounds like equal, and angular kind of sounds like angles. So equiangular means all angles are congruent. And we're going to talk about what that means specifically in class tomorrow. Okay, so there's your four different answers if I ask you to classify a triangle based on its angle. So let's do an example. Okay, I give you this picture, and I want you to classify all the triangles in this picture by angle measures. And there's lots of triangles in here. I think I can see three triangles. The first triangle I see is triangle EFH. So I'm going to highlight for that for you. EFH is this one right here. Boom. All right, we know we have two 30-degree angles, so some people might say, oh, it's an acute triangle, and stop there. But let's look at what this third tri um, angle has to be. If you look at this linear pair, this is 60 degrees, and so this one has to add up to be 180 with it, so this one would have to be 120 degrees. Since this is an obtuse angle, EFH, triangle EFH, would have to be an obtuse triangle. Okay, 
And let's see, another triangle we can look at. Let's look at IC triangle FHG. Triangle FHG. That one is this one over here. And let's see, we have two 60 degree angles. And then we're not sure what this third one is. So let's, let's see if we can dissect some information. We have a right angle, so that means 90 degrees. And we know this part is 30 degrees. So that means the leftover piece would have to be 60 degrees because 60 plus 30 makes 90. So we can use the angle addition postulate to figure out that this one's 60. So hmm, since all of them are acute angles, you can say, okay, they, it's an acute triangle. But notice all three angles are absolutely the same. So not only is it an acute triangle, but it's also an equiangular triangle. And we'll talk more about more in class about the relationship between acute and equiangular triangles. Okay, there I said I think I saw three in here. So we did these two little triangles. What about the whole big triangle? All right, so this whole big triangle, triangle E H G. Let's see, we have a 30 degree angle, we have a 60 degree angle, those are both acute because they're smaller than 90, but then we also have this 90 degree angle, so this one would have to be a right triangle. Okay, so when I, again, when I ask you to classify based on the angle measures, I, there's only four different answers possible. It's acute, right, obtuse, or equiangular. So that's the first thing you're going to be doing. Second thing you're going to be doing is classifying triangles by sides. Equilateral triangle, all sides are congruent. Isosceles triangle, two sides are congruent. And a scalene triangle, only, oh, it would make sense to say one side is congruent, right? No sides are congruent. Okay, and again, I just want to reiterate, when you look at a figure in geometry, you cannot assume segments are congruent based on appearance. And you guys all know how I draw my, my pictures, so definitely do not assume I need to have tick marks. Um, I need to mark it appropriately with tick marks to sh tell you that they're congruent. So here's an example. Classify all triangles by side lengths. So again, in this picture, I think I see three triangles. So let's start off with triangle ABC. Hmm. Okay, triangle ABC. Let's see, do I see any tick marks? I see two tick marks, so that might mean that it's isosceles. So this one, if this one's 15 with this red tick mark, that means this one has to be 15. But this side is also 15, so why don't I put another tick mark and add it in? They were trying to trick you. This one is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral. And we're going to talk about the relationship between isosceles triangles and uh, equilateral triangles tomorrow in class, because if you wanted to say that it's an equilateral and isosceles triangle, that would technically be correct, but I want you to, to know that this is actually equilateral. We'll talk about more why it can also be called isosceles in class. Okay, so we did ABC. Let's talk about triangle ACD. Okay, triangle ACD is this one. And let's see, we know that this side was 15. We knew that this we know that this side's five and this side's eighteen. None of those are congruent to each other. None of them are the same. So triangle ACD is considered a scalene triangle. And then let's see, let's do the whole big triangle, triangle ABD. Okay, so if we look at the big triangle, triangle ABD, we have let's see, on this side we have eighteen. This whole side we have fifteen plus. 5, so what is that going to be? That's going to be 20, and then we have a 15. So 15, 20, and 18, none of those are congruent to each other, so that one's also going to have to be scalene. Okay, oops, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The video did not stop my sensors. <laughs> I haven't moved in a while, so my sensor's turned off. Okay, so we've classified by sides. There's three potential answers. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, put it all together with some algebra, and we're going to find side lengths. So find the side lengths of triangle FGH. So, of, I'm sorry, of equilateral triangle FGH. That's super important because we learned equilateral, all sides are the same. All the sides are congruent. So they gave us way too much information in here. You guys can pick any two sides you want that really stand out to you. For example, one of my favorite numbers is 3. So I'm going to pick this side, and I'm going to pick this side, because this one also has a 3. And I'm going to set them equal to each other. Because an equal in an equilateral triangle, all the sides are congruent. So I could put tick marks on all of these. You could set 
these two sides together if you wanted to. You could set these two sides together if you wanted to. Either way, you're going to get the same answer for eight or for y. Excuse me. So I do my algebra. I'm going to add a four. I'm going to subtract this two y, and I'm going to get that y equals seven. And some people are going to do their happy dance too early and stay and finish there. Again, the question was find the side lengths. Again, since all the side lengths are exactly the same because it's an equilateral triangle, I can plug it into any one I want to. I'm going to plug it into this one because two and three are smallest numbers, and I think that's going to be the easiest. So two times seven plus three, that's 14 plus three. That means all the side lengths, fg, uh, hg, and FH are going to equal 17. Your questions that I want you to try are on page 219 in your textbook, numbers 5, 8, and 10, and I'll put it up for you at the end of the video. Fun fact of the video, did you know in Hollywood there's a $1,000 fine for using silly string on Halloween? Don't go to Halloween on ho <laughs> don't go to Hollywood on Halloween with silly string. All right, so the questions again, you're going to do in number 5, 8 and 10 in your textbook and here it is for you right here. 5, 8 and 10. All right. Yay for triangles and classifying them based on their angles and side lengths.